What's good, everyone? Welcome back to My First Kicks. This is episode 131, and this week I welcome back Tim Chisano back to the podcast. Man, this is wild. You know, I want to thank everybody who has been listening or new listeners and people who are just finding out about us and are kind of going back. And I just want to thank all of y'all because we have reached 10,000 listens, 10,000 downloads uh, for this podcast. And it's to me, it's a big milestone. I never thought that an idea that I had and sat on for two years. I mean, if you listen to the Gaston Ramonte episode, you can hear my procrastination at its like at its peak as at the finest that it will ever be in my life. Um, and I sat on this idea and I finally, you know, during the quarantine decided to just bet on myself and, and put content out and create this podcast. And we've had amazing guests from beginning to end people who have gone and done a ton of stuff and built their brand or helped build the brand. Um, and Tim is one of those guys, uh, one of those guests. He recently, uh, yeah, recently reached one mil on TikTok. You know, his Instagram is forever just growing. He's inspirational. He is a big sneakerhead. And we talk kicks. We talk corporate because he he is a person at a, a very high level. So it was very cool to get his insight on being yourself. And, you know, as a person who likes to share their kicks or wear their kicks to the office, uh, I even talk about a moment in the office that happened to me uh, last week that <laughs> that I find just hilarious. I posted it on Twitter as well, but it was just very, I'm very grateful to have him come back on and just, you know, we were, we were, I was able, cause like the first time he was on, we only got him for like 30 minutes. So I, I, I squeezed in as much as I could to, to, to get out and, and and this time he came back and, and was like, we're going to do an hour. And I was just like, man, I know how much you you block out your time and and work to make sure that, you know, you know, all, everybody's needs are uh, meets needs. Everybody's needs are met. My bad. Uh, and it was just really cool. I I just love talking to him and I hope to have more conversations with him. So I'm very excited for you all to listen to this episode. It is. It's a long one, so I'm very, very, very grateful for his time. And you know, we talked sneakers, and I just couldn't believe that I was able to get him again. But once I saw that we were creeping up on the ten thousand mark, I was like, "Let me just reach out to Tim because I've been pestering him on his TikTok about, you know, we'd love to have you on again on some of his posts." And I mean, I wasn't doing it on every single post, but it, you know, I think I consider him as a current like big guy on TikTok and he's doing his content his way, figuring it out and doing his thing. And it was, it's just a great chat. So very excited to get into that. You can follow Tim at T-I-M-M-C-H-I-U-S-A-N-O. He's on everything as that. I'll put his link tree in. His website is extremely helpful if you are into, you know, pro pro uh, progressing your pro uh, pro progressing your professional career. Wow, doing two <laughs> doing two p words back to back really fumbled me right there. Anyway, he has really good insights. His his TikToks are all insightful. His Instagram is extremely well put together better than mine i recently put up you know post from june and i thought all my pictures were trash so shout out to him you know it's it's very just cool and interesting because you know i end with a question that i it's been on my mind for a while and i'm very excited to hear what everybody else thinks about that question instead of you know my new question which is going back in time and sitting beside yourself and and open up that box and telling your younger self what would you do you know uh this one was more in uh, to kin of of what we were talking about in his first episode so just a little bit more expanding on that especially with the progression of where that brand has gone um so 
Yeah. And you know where to find me. I went on another tangent, but you know where to find me. I am who is hot on all social medias. Follow the podcast on my first Kicks Pod. Follow the podcast at TikTok and YouTube. Please hit those subscribes at my first Kicks. Please, please, please. Um, and if you see this, it's your first time listening. Uh, share, rate, review, do what else you, whatever you can, to help this young podcast blossom into a older podcast i don't know anyway on to this week's guest tim chisano but before we jump into this episode i want to talk to you about drops and collect by soul savvy with drops and collect you are able to stay ahead of the game using drops you can enter raffles and set alerts for any restocks <sighs> All right, well i can't stop it anyway whatever <sighs> Before we jump into the episode, I want to talk to you about Drops and Collect by Soul Savvy. With Drops and Collect, you'll be able to stay ahead of the game. Using Drops, you can enter raffles and set alarms for any restocks. It would also help you to never miss a release ever again. I mean, my notifications on and every morning my notifications go crazy. <laughs> it's right before 10 o'clock. And after you cop some fresh kicks, use Collect to manage your collection. I'm still in the process of adding my kicks. I mean, I have a ton, but it's fine. But what's cool about Collect is that you can also make trades with no fees if you're a current member. But don't worry. If you aren't a member, you just have to pay a flat rate of $8. Now, how do you get these apps? Just use the links in the description of this podcast. Download these apps and grow your collection by also helping the podcast. That's right. Just use the links in the description and start expanding your collection today. Hey, Tim, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me on again, man. This is uh, this is hilarious. I mean, uh, it's been a, it's been a minute, so we got some stuff to catch up on. We definitely got some stuff to catch up on. I so the reason I mean, luckily, because I announced you the previous week, right? And it's wild because I just reached 10,000 listens, 10,000 downloads on my podcast. And I was like, uh, somebody, I posted it on Twitter and somebody was just like, wow, that's a huge accomplishment. And I was just like, you can't watch when I bring this, a, a big guest is coming back onto the podcast. And this is just to, I mean, it, on top of me hitting you up like a couple months ago, just trying to, you know, just see if you, you would be down to jump on again. Um, this coincided with, uh, with the podcast reaching over 10,000 listens. So it's, it's wild. Dope. Congratulations, man. That's dope. That's fantastic. I, I can appreciate it for a multitude of reasons, so it uh, makes it that much more of a pleasure to be here with you today. No, man. I mean, listen, you're super inspirational, like we talked about the first time you were around. But, like, listen, you you reached a million followers on TikTok. You know, you're the the social the social media darling of the <laughs> currently. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just, I mean. Let's do a little, just if, if people who aren't familiar with you that are listening, just tuning in, that have been listening to the podcast since your last appearance, just a little introduce, introduction about yourself would be great. Cool. So my name's Tim. I'm a 45-year-old weirdo from Brooklyn who <laughs> just, I started doing, basically just capturing my day in the life on TikTok a few years ago. I mean, I've been doing it for a minute at this point. Literally just had something pop up that was like, hey, here's your post from three years ago today. And part of me can't believe that in August, it'll be four years since I made my first post, which is crazy. And there could be an argument to be made that like, dude, you only have a million after four years, like especially with like the, the long, um, you know, lead you got out of the gate because a lot of people weren't making stuff. I mean, I guess I started making stuff with like serious rigor around the same time that a lot of other bigger creators out of the gate started as well, which would be, you know, pandemic time because everybody's got that story. Um, but yeah, I'm a corporate executive by day. Literally, I'm a um, you know vice president of production and creative services is my official title. I work at a Fortune 100 company. The company's name I don't mention because when I do mention it, I usually get my hand slapped a little bit. I don't get my hand slapped for a lot in this space, luckily. But I thought you were gonna be like, I usually get like a thousand, a million uh, invites on LinkedIn. <laughs> no, uh, well, that too, I mean, usually like I, it's LinkedIn's been totally unmanageable. Most channels have been totally unmanageable because I'm doing this all this by myself, mm -hmm. have no thought whatsoever that it would reach this level of 
uh, awareness, so to speak. And so, yeah, corporate exec by day, you know, TikTok or content creator in any type of spare time I can get because I just love doing it. You know, started my own podcast a little while ago that I just got ghosted by my second producer. So, you know, that's a whole nother story in and of itself. I mean, uh, um, you can, yeah, I mean, we can talk about this off there. Uh, <laughs> I love uh, this <laughs> my, you know, and then I'm a, I'm a, I'm a husband and a dad. So, you know, full-time family, full-time corporate, full-time, you know, content, so to speak. And really like my broader mission in all of this is just to tr try to provide some usefulness in what I'm sharing, especially as it relates to being stuck in a nine to five job and just having gone through all of those travails and then being in a role now where I've been for the past 10 years and seeing all of the shit, because at this point I've seen all of the shit in corporate America. And then how can I help others feel more comfortable and confident with where they are and where they're going or where they could go? Um, also, because I've got this crazy theory that it's gonna be 10,000 people that are gonna change the world and it's gonna be most likely the top 20 in the Fortune 500 world over the next 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So if I can take some of the folks that are like, hmm, there's so much I would love to change about this place, but didn't actually think about getting in the space and changing it themselves. Mm -hmm. If I can help them feel more comfortable and feel like enabled to go do it, uh, that would be dope. So yeah, that's kind of who I am and what I do, I guess. No, I mean, it's so dope because I've had a previous guest on and we talked about, you know, I guess being yourself in corporate America and, and like, how do we change the perception? Like, I mean, recently I had like headshots done in my job because uh, my job worked with, uh, do you know what Trade Desk is? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, so Trade Desk came in and they were like, oh, we're going to do headshots for everybody. So I went and I did headshots and, and like the night before I'm just sitting there like, should I do a button up? Should I not do a button up? Who should I like, who should I be like? And, and I really came up with like, if I'm pushing the idea of be yourself in, in corporate America, like you, is it's all about how your output, not about like the outfit that you have to wear to to prove that you can put this output out. Um, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna rock a Supreme shirt, and I got like like this guy took like 70 pictures of me and he, he like everybody else is getting like six pictures i'm getting like 70 pictures i got pictures with a hat on like it, it, it felt more of like not like i didn't want to say like validation but more of just like i felt more of myself so my pictures look more natural and and you know i wanted to be more like who who i am and and i think that when i did that and and like even recently it's just like i've been wearing more t-shirts and not wearing button downs and being like you know myself and and it's funny because yesterday because i was not yesterday the day the tuesday of this week i went into the office and um people are starting to know that i have a sneaker podcast and and i talk about sneakers i post about sneakers on instagram so i'm walking to the pantry in the office and somebody goes hey i think that's the sneaker guy and i was just like what i just kept walking i was like i'm not gonna interact with that that's weird <laughs> <laughs> Yo, get re get ready. You keep doing this, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's coming, man, and uh, uh, it can be it can be wild. But dude, that's so dope because the ability to be yourself, like more yourself, mm -hmm. in the workspace is critical. Like I I think that bad behavior in the workplace, bad behavior being like people that are bullies or just you know when people are shitty to each other is you know have you heard of the broken windows theory relative yeah. to crime yeah mm -hmm. i think that shitty behavior in the corporate space is like the broken windows to mental health mm -hmm. right because we come to these places we spend shit loads of time here and then for various reasons it can turn into just like cage fights or just like mental cage fights to a certain extent where it's like passive aggressive in email kind of a dick in the meeting maybe a boss is a bit aggressive and mean and then it's just like the perfect storm to just not like it and then be that much more stressed out and then it translates into everything else in your world. So to hear you say that you felt, cause I can totally appreciate the validation in showing up as yourself and to your point, and you said it perfectly, it's about the output, not the outfit. Like that's, that's a line, man. Like that's, that says it as succinctly and as articulate as I've heard, because you're right. And people are like, Oh, how do you deal with, how do you deal with having tattoos in the corporate place? And how do you deal with, you know, is, why do they, they let you wear sneakers and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, 
it's because I work my ass off because people yeah. don't see that. You know, they see that. And some people will see that first, but then I want to work around that so that they either haven't seen that first. They've just seen the output first. And it's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that about him. Or it's like, oh, like, that's cool that you do this, this, or their office looks like that or whatever. But then I'm able to just floor them with my output and my, and for the right reasons too, not like, you know, I, I always like saying it's uh, hustle culture is kind of bullshit mm -hmm. that it's more about like rise and shine versus just rise and grind. And yes, there's obviously a grind element to it, but like, I don't want to advocate for that, like happiness before anything else. But if you're content and you feel like you're able to make the most of the opportunity you have in the workplace, then yeah, your, your output should will, your output will always outshine your outfit eventually, but you're going to have to be mad patient and it could take a long ass time, but it's, always worth it and then people like yourself can then help recreate the culture and the structure for others further down the road mm -hmm. you know I've, i'm trying my ass off here but i feel like you know probably a greater gift is to help the next generation understand this and then get a t you know 10-year head start if i can give it to them mm -hmm. um you know to go make the change himself too so that everybody just sees the output and they don't really give a shit about anything else. No. Yeah. Uh, it's like the idea of, Oh, you have to like, I think it's like, I mean, how do I explain it? I mean, you recently were in Japan, right? And yep. Japan has this idealization of like workmen's, uh, 1980s America where everybody, not 1980s, 19, like sixties or something like that, where it's like industrial work. Everybody was just like, everybody's working. Um, and like you work, you work, you work, and then you just get, you only get like one day off. And, um, it was like, like, I have such an idealization of Japan. And it's funny that like, People in America idealize Japan when Japan idealizes America. So we're just bouncing back cultures back and forth. Mm -hmm. But it's like work culture over there is so stressful. And it's like you have to be in a suit 24-7. Like, you know, you're doing that. And then we we see that as success as, like, you know, people on the Internet and, like, uh, workmen's wear and stuff like that. Like, And and then we bring that here in, in America and we're just like, we have to dress up. We have to be, you know, button downs, you know, slacks, everything. And, and that proves that the the output that we're doing is is, is as up to how we dress in the in the office, you know. So yeah, this is wild. <laughs> yeah, and it's so funny too because it's like, and I try to not generalize too much, mm -hmm. but the just even the notion of business casual freaks me out. Mm -hmm. I'm like that just doesn't make sense in my brain. Like right now, I'm wearing the epitome of business casual. And really for only one reason, because there's somebody that's in our office today that's about as high in the company as you can get. Mm -hmm. And this is a hundred thousand person company. So, you know, as much as I want to just always be myself, I do, I do want to have the output come before the outfit. Mm -hmm. So if this person is going to be on the floor once every three years, I'm going to be cognizant of that and event. And <laughs> plus who knows at this point, like because of, the million followers on TikTok, you might see me and be like, you're that guy that's come up in meetings because I know that I've come up yeah. in meetings like that before because it's like, hey, what do we do about this employee that has, an, you know, has a million followers on TikTok and a decent sized presence on Instagram too? And like he films stuff in his own. Like, so it's a, it's a bit of an, an anomaly. But going back to your point about like the idealization, um, and I said this in a post yesterday, I think it was like, I just want to help us have normal ass conversations about stuff. Like there was a question that popped up about me sending out emails at four 30 in the morning. And the larger point that I didn't make, because it, you know, you have to be much more cognizant of time mm -hmm. in obviously making a TikTok post versus a conversation via podcast the po point that I was trying to make that I don't think fully got across was, it's about what works for each of us as individuals. Right. I obviously need to be cognizant of what the response is and what people then see if I pop up in their inbox at an off hours time. But at the same time, if I'm really doing my job, then there is a mutual understanding that I need to be like, these are my hours. They do not have to be your hours. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of questions where people are like, well, 
you could just delay send and you can schedule things between nine and five. And I thought about that a lot because we just got the latest version of Windows that has the the delayed send, like the scheduled send oh, thing yeah. in it. So it's like, it's only something that I, you know, at our, at our company at least, or at least for those that work off of MacBook, um, off of Macs, because there's always that, especially in a big company, there's always those variables of like, who has what computer, what software they have access to, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Just got the scheduled thing maybe a month ago. And so the question popped up, like, wouldn't you just schedule them to send at nine? And, you know, you start to think about some of these things because you don't, it's not normal, I don't think, to be of my age, have this broader of a audience and have like an ongoing conversation. You'll get questions that you hadn't considered before, right? A lot of questions that could be like, you know, at one, when you were 25, what was blank, blank and blank that you wouldn't do, well, you know, again, you're like, that's amazing. I can come up with something off the top of my head, but like, I don't have these conversations or I hadn't had these conversations until you all started asking me. So right. for the scheduling of the emails, I was like, well, if I'm having a good dialogue with my team, then they'll know that this just works better for me. Then I don't have to sit there and be like, and not that it's very difficult to schedule emails to send, but I also want it to be the first thing that they see in their inbox. Cause I know that that's going to be helpful too. Mm -hmm. And then am I overthinking it? And like, all goes back to the broader point of like, if we can just show up like ourselves and have normal conversations about what works for you, what doesn't work for you, when are you going to be able to show up and just be the best version of yourself? Because that's who we hired and that's who we want here is just the best version of what you bring to the table. If we can have more normal conversations like that, all the better, which is why I take exception with some of the content that's like, how do you say I'm overworked professionally? Oh, I made right. those videos. I yeah. was like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want like, I, and I've, I've, it's so funny because I've had these conversations with mm -hmm. other creators and, and they're like, don't, cause I'm like, I feel like I'm like, I want, I'm so, like, I get the trigger finger sometimes from like, I want to just stitch it or like, you know, duet it or something and be like mm -hmm. to each their own, obviously. And I don't want, but I don't do it because I don't want to come across as like shaming anyone else's content. But right. part of me wants to be like, that's you're exacerbating the corporate problem that you're trying to address in the first place mm -hmm. by putting this into like weird professional code right. versus and all, like, and it's all being p passively aggressive and totally, and it, totally. it's going to come off that way. And you're going to be known in the company as somebody as a passive aggressive, Oh, you can't talk to them. And then, you know, you end up getting like, you know, locked in a certain position because of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's been part of what's made all of this really fun, though, is the opportunity to just be myself in front of a broader audience, get the people around me at work. I mean, it's, it's weird to have the conversation with your boss about this stuff, mm -hmm. especially like on an ongoing basis. And it gets to a point too where you're like, oh, you're, you're watching this now. Like some of the comments you're making was like, that was yesterday's post. Like you... <laughs> There's a distinct possibility you went from, I don't want to know what's going on behind that door to I'm watching everything to try to keep tabs or to just like see what's happening in general. Mm -hmm. And then to walk into the office the next day, there was a while where I struggled with that mightily where I'm like two separate worlds, two separate worlds, two separate worlds. And then at some point I was like, it's all there. Like I, I, I fully I, need to acknowledge the fact that like there are things I say that people can be like, Hey, did you see the Tim put this in the thing yesterday? Mm -hmm. So it also makes it a bit daunting too. Here's the one thing I'll say before you respond. Sorry, I'm, I'm fl flapping the gum so much. No, you're good. Be like what I've found, which I wish I could not do over again, but be less cognizant of is my wife watches everything, which is amazing. The most helpful piece to all of it. And she reads all the comments too. Mm -hmm. My parents who are in their mid ish getting into the late 70s they watch all of it too which i don't know how to feel about that because then i'll get it's like that's how they found out that i didn't graduate from college oh. that conversation didn't come until i was 45 years old oh my god and, <laughs> oh my god yeah so like there's the, there's been things like that that have just made it um super weird so the the point of me bringing this up is 
be as as you as you grow with your podcast and as your presence grows try to be aware of those variables but don't let it change your tone or approach mm -hmm. like i've found it very difficult to not be like uh, my parents are watching i need to talk this way or like my boss is watching i need to talk this way because mm -hmm. then i just think that makes for like worse content so to speak right so anyway. it, seems, it comes off across comes off across an ingenuine or ingenuine ingenuine Ungenuine? Yeah, it, yeah it, it, I think it's ingenuine. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's got so many filters and layers on it that it's like, yeah. okay, this isn't real anymore. Yeah, uh, it's funny because you mentioned that and, you know, you talk about your boss, like, looking at your content. My boss looks at my content as well. Um, and he's he's always, and I'm talking about, he's he's like your level. He's an exec on, on, in my job. So he's like, he's, he's always just like, whenever we're at, like, get togethers because he, he lives in LA so he comes over here we get, get, get togethers he's always like you know Hassan has a podcast it's about sneakers and he's like instantly like pushing my content to other people that's amazing that's <laughs> the best and how does it like how do you feel about that when it that's, happens that's in the moment? I think it, 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 I always feel weird about it to be honest like I, he doesn't listen to the podcast but shout out to him um he always shares like he always talks about like how my social media is so like he's like I learned about sneakers so much from Hassan's uh from Hassan's post and I was just like yeah and I was just like I don't I've, I've been so because I I grew up my mom my mom uh pushed this idea of work and how to work in my head right so it was all very like you know when I first started doing retail and and doing this stuff it was very like oh um separate everything's separate work is separate from from uh your your outside life like you can't show uh, what you do or tell people about what you do outside of work, because then it's going to conflict with yep. you know, like how they perceive you at work. And then you're going to think that you're not hard, you're not a hard worker. So then I took that into the corporate mindset. And, and then around when I cur currently started working at this job at this ad agency, uh, it, I posted it, I posted the podcast on LinkedIn. And before I posted it, it was, I posted something about like, is it, I posted a question and one of my bosses answered it, which was like, is it okay for you to have outside interest and still and post and talk about your outside interest? Kind of like I'm talking about more about like, you know, side gigs, side jobs, like, you know, stuff like that. And is it okay for you to mention about mention this stuff to people that you work with? And also, is it okay to cast that you're doing this on like a LinkedIn where all your, your basically your yep. network is there, right? And and my boss answered was just like, yes, we want to know, like, because she's she was very high level at that. She was very high up at that time, and she still is now. Um, at my boss at the time, uh, she was just like, yes, we want more people to tell us that their that the job is not their life, because mm. then they know we can we can move you into different career paths that we know that you're trying to progress because if you're stagnant at one point and you want to just stay at this specific point right here, you're going to stay there. But if you want to move up and do other things, you have to make it known. And so that mm. was like, yeah. Amazing response. Good for her. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a awakening because then I started posting more about the podcast and, and posting, you know, and being more proactive about and ma making content and getting out there. But I do know you have to do keep in mind that other people are watching. So it's like my whole concept, my whole, my whole idea in my head about being on social media is very much of like, uh, people are going to take it as face value. So they're going to see it as what it is right there. And they're going to perceive it at what, what you hope. Uh, what you hope they would perceive it as like as what your content should be um so like if you think about it like from like a work perspective if somebody doesn't know you and they want to hire you and then they see your your social post and they're like oh this guy's like drinking all the time what is like you know right. like yeah they're, they're gonna be like oh so he's probably gonna be drinking on the job like <laughs> like i always take yeah. it to like the next level but yeah that's that's how that's how it was about with like creating sneaker content and stuff like that i think it's i also feel like because I've, I've been I've been fortunate to have a lot of opportunities, but the problem with me is that I've passed up on them a lot. Like I passed up on a lot of opportunities um, because I was afraid. I didn't want to make that jump. I didn't want it. I didn't. It took me two years to start this podcast to talk about yeah. sneakers, something that talked about 
since I, for years, right? And and people, I think also people are too afraid to do that. But it's like you have to make your intentions known. Like if you want to do this stuff, you have to talk to have to talk about it. You have to talk about it when somebody gives you an opportunity. Like yo, oh, I met somebody that works at, at Nike. Uh, he's looking for somebody to like host something. Do you want to do it? I can get you right into the front of the line. Like. If you say no to that, you're not going to get it. And then if you if you don't talk about it, like that's what you want to do at one point in your life, then that opportunity won't be out there for you. Yeah. Like, Let alone you got to do it with with scale too, mm-hmm. right? You got to do it over and over and over and over and over again. How many episodes have you done? You, you will be uh, episode 131. There you like, right? So it's not just saying it, it's saying it. it again and again and again and again and again. And I think that some people even have the misnomer of, oh, well, cool, I said it. It's like, okay, say it again. And then go do that again next week. And then go do it again. And like, and which should also be somewhat of a freeing aspect of this for those that might be on the fence of like, well, why should, because at first for a while, there's a distinct possibility that no one's going to notice or care. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. When you're new, everyone starts at zero, zero subscribers, zero downloads, zero followers. Everybody starts at zero. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while until someone's like, oh, do you do this thing? Do you have that thing? Like, you know, even if you're promoting yourself. So I think people get too hung up on exactly what you just said. And then at the same time, too, they might then assume that, well, I did. I did three podcasts. Nothing happened. It's like, go do 300. Mm-hmm. Like that's that seems to be the consistency across the board. I was actually having this conversation with my daughter yesterday about Preston, the YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Guy's got 24 million subscribers. Yeah. Know the dude personally, amazing human being. Mm-hmm. What struck me about the conversation with my daughter, because it was like she was he's her favorite uh, creator mm-hmm. and I asked her, I was like, how many different types of content does he do? And she had to think about it for a second. We kind of talked about the different styles that he does. And and then I was like, how often does he post? And she didn't know off the top of her head. We looked and we're like, okay, it looks like once a week. And it was while we were looking to see, just to have this conversation, I love these conversations with her because she's she wants to be a veterinarian, but she's very much a YouTube kid. We're like, that's where she gets 90% of her content from. Yeah. And so we can have conversations about subscribers and about content verticals. And, you know, obviously in the way that you would talk about that with a 10 year old, Mm -hmm. but still, and when we were having the conversation, we looked at Preston's page to try to see like, how often does he post? She goes, Oh, and he's got 4k something. What's this number? And I was like, that's the number of videos. My man's made 4,000 videos. Like, so, if for those that are like, Oh, I want to do this, but I'm not sure. Or I'm scared, etc. A, you're fine. No one's going to know it. Like just start because your best and worst case scenario is that you do something out of the gate. That's like super mega viral, but even then you still got to do it another hundred times to make it actually stick. Right. And B because it takes that long and to put so much work into it, you're inevitably going to be that passionate about it that you're willing to do it with that type of frequency. And then the intentions that were at the core of why I did in the first place, are going to come to the surface. And then nine times out of 10, unless you have like bad intentions, or you're talking about like a shitty topic or it's something that's derogatory or mean or whatever, like people will understand like, Oh, this is just a passion. This is just something that, gets this person fired up. So of course they would do 200 podcasts about it. Of course they would make 2000 TikToks about it. And then it, you know, and then it, then it starts to, I think, create an accelerant in a good way, but you got to start with one. Yeah, I know. I think like the, see, I've been, I've been, so I'm currently, I'm just the most consistent thing I'm with. I'm with, uh, I'm creating the podcast, getting the podcast episode out, and then I'll, promote the podcast right but it's all about like the little things of like creating social content that will 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 get people to understand my ideas or like get people to understand like my takes on sneakers like i mean i recently got roasted on on tiktok because i said and hey, this is one of your favorite shoes i don't i don't like the jordan 16 so <laughs> so so i i posted a video about that shoe and i you know i made i i i try to make it so that it's like i say it's about me i don't I, whenever i create content i try to be like 
you know, these are my takes. These are, this is what I think. Right. And so to create engagement and that that's how, because when I was growing up, like talking about sneakers was, it wasn't like, I'm trying to convince you. It's like, Oh, you have a take. I want to yeah. hear your take. I, I Let me talk about my take. And yeah. Just hash it out. Right. Um, and so I made that, I, that's the kind of, kind of content I try to stick my, my foot in. And I, and so I made that video and people were just nonstop comments. Not the most engagement I've ever had on a video was about the 16s. Cause I said that when I was in middle school, somebody came in and came in with that same exact pair that you have the 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 navy blue ones and yep. we all started joking on the dude and said that he was wearing tap dance shoes and so, <laughs> so <laughs> i can see i can see why you'd say that obviously i feel differently but i can see why you'd say that that's and that's part of the fun of the conversation too right yeah. I, I, I love that. And then, and so I did that and people were just like, you're crazy. The 16s are amazing. They're gorgeous. And uh, shout out to Valley Boy Kicks because he's the one that started that uh, that video because he was saying that if they brought back the bread uh, 16s, that they would sell out and go crazy. And I was just like, I, I don't think so because <laughs> because because this shoe has been retro before and it just sat. But I, I, I was more of just like, I just don't personally don't like the shoe. And I and I and then I called the, sh the shroud a vest and people were coming at me for that. And then I uh, at the end, I did the I sarcastically and I guess because I haven't been sarcastic on TikTok, I said, and this is why people only like to to collect one through 14 and everybody just took that and just started going with it. And I was just like, I was being sarcastic. Every most of my replies were like, I was just being sarcastic. I was just being sarcastic. <laughs> but I mean, the, I don't know. Have, have you spent much time on sneaker talk at all? Do you follow? Not me? really. I don't, uh, unfortunately the answer is not really because I don't, I don't have a lot of time to consume content, so to speak. So, I just, I spend most of my time making cause like what y'all, what anybody who watches my stuff sees is very true to life. Like 15 minute time block increments from 4 a.m. until 10 p.m. You know, with some flexibility obviously baked in, but like I, I don't. And I think based off of, cause like for like what I have that I'm following is basically been stagnant from the get go. Mm -hmm. So um, no, I don't. I don't, I don't know what the hell is happening on sneaker talk. Sneaker talk is absolutely bananas, man. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, cause the one thing about social media, and I don't know if you agree with this, but I think that when it comes or even content creation on social media is like, it's a land of first. If you were the first one there, you will mm -hmm. be the most known, right? You know, you have, yeah. uh, Brian Ware, who's like one of the biggest sneaker TikTokers that first started during the pandemic. He never he never bought any sneakers before the pandemic. He was just uh, he, he just he just jumped in, started making sneaker content, and now he's like one of the tastemakers on TikTok. Um, he 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 jumped in on that just specifically for that with no with zero sneaker culture, like like zero sneaker history, um, and it and it, it just kind of like skewed the way people were creating for uh, sneaker sneaker TikTok. So then, you know, you have like, I mean, if you follow Morgan sneaker room, like he's, he's the one that's more about like, I got the sneakers, here's the stories. Then you also yeah. have like flex who's more of like a combative, like reporter of like, he'll be like, why do people get stuff early? Like I've had a bunch of these people on the podcast and um, it's like, I got different sides of it, but all, but everything, came together for me where I try to make TikToks and it did I'm like I'm so late on it that it's like I don't have the the will to be like all right three videos a day like I'm gonna talk about this shoe I'm gonna talk about this shoe and like I'll come up with ideas but if I'm putting the podcast first because which that's what my my thing is I'm putting the podcast first always because that's if I don't have a podcast then there's no reason to make content yeah right, you know and so it all just trickled down. So I, it just felt more easier to just have people on that's been on TikTok and then talk about what it is on TikTok. Uh, what's a piece into sneakers? And it's like, it's a lot of people just talking about how they like reps more. And it's like, you know, like people buying sneakers, not knowing the culture, the, the buying sneakers. And like the biggest thing that I did not understand is like, do you remember the, the CSVs? The Stu CSVs? Yep. 
those went crazy on TikTok, and then the price just started skyrocketing, and all these resellers are making like eight hundred. Like now, I think they're like worth like almost a two thousand dollars now because of just like TikTok just taking it and just letting it go. So it, it's sneaker TikTok is not fun for the culture, I want to say, but uh, it's just like I just sneaker sneaker social media has been just like a big talking point for me this past week because you know there's people that that are like like wondering why people are paying so much money to get early pairs now that's like the big topic now is why are you paying you know x amount of money to get early pairs to make content so that you're the first one to make content on the shoe and if you're the first one to make content on the shoe that revenue that you get from those videos will will make you pay will help you pay for that shoe that you just bought so it equals out but is it worth it i don't know <laughs> it dep- I mean, you know, th- those those things are funny because I've 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 gone through phases, and it's it's also funny because it's like phases passed for me to a certain extent, mm-hmm. where you know from an early, and I've got one of the best plugs in the world mm-hmm. that has like su- like this guy f- fell ass backwards into a WhatsApp chat, what's uh, WhatsApp what, chat, WhatsApp, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fell backwards in a WhatsApp chat that was between a bunch of people working in factories in China. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and he had a friend that spoke Mandarin and was like, what's, what is this? And he's like, Oh, this is like, I don't know how you got on this, but like they're talking about, Oh, when these things are going to come out and like all of these other, um, like all these other release things that would seem like very secretive across the board. And so he's like, and so that's how he got into it. And then all of a sudden people were, he was one of those where if there's a picture that shows up somewhere, he's likely getting credit for it to be like one of the first first. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've, and I used to get a bunch of stuff from him and for a multitude of reasons, I just dialed that back a just because it wasn't sustainable from like a, you know, how you use your disposable income, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And also to your point too, I was like, mine are going to be beat up when everyone else's are looking fresh. So Mm -hmm. there's also that aspect too, where it's like, yo, you trashed yours out of the gate. And then you're like, you know, you're not going to have a conversation on the street to be like, yo, I've had mine for six months because people are like, who gives a shit? Especially when you're just out walking around the streets in New York city and they're going to get fucked up on the streets in New York city. And, um, but it's also, it's, it makes me think I've got one pair. It was, it's a Yeezy, glow in the dark soul that never got released that if you look it up like you can find the popcorn trail to what it was and actually actually i've sold all of my yeezys except for this one pair um but it makes me think that i need to go bust those back out in in regards to if you're first you know you can have vibe but a it just i think it would be an interesting story to to dust back up off the shelf because that was like god that had been 18 or 19 maybe when those were gonna come out um oh they, but those they, were the was it like a 350 yeah 350 yeah. v2 mm-hmm. with you know uh gray like a couple different tones of gray for the upper mm-hmm. and then a glow in the dark midsole mm-hmm. and it like they glow like your headphones like that kind of color like yeah. once you leave them out and i've worn them a couple times just because i was like fuck it, this, you know, who cares? Mm -hmm. Um, I would also be curious too. Like, I think I want to make a post about it too, just to be, just to see who might say, oh, I can check those for you to see like, because for those, like who knows, like there's actual articles, like people can go and they can see, yes, this was definitely something they experimented with. It turned out the rubber to make the glow sole was just too expensive. So they never went into mass production. X amount of pairs were made. God knows where they are now. But how do you actually like take a look at it and be like, yo, this is real versus like, you know, do somebody, does somebody make a fake out of something that only had 50 pairs made? I don't, maybe, who knows? Um, but so part of me and based off of the, what you just said, makes me want to bust that back out. Oh, yeah. At the same I mean, time, I, I hate calling attention to Yi. May his, you know, talents um, rest wherever they may, but that's a yeah. whole nother loaded conversation in and of itself. But um <laughs> You know, uh, but it makes me feel like I got to go bust out the glow in the dark pair. That's like probably the most unique pair. It's from the other most unique pair I have are sitting right here. And they're literally just like kind of collecting dust almost. Mm-hmm. 
but you know, I got these when they first came out, obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but I got these when they first came out, um, being like, yo, I have a feeling these are going to be super rare. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now I'm like, I don't know what to do with them. Wear them. Well, I, but I mean, the funny thing is I don't, I don't love the colorway. Okay. Like it's just, it's too, like it's too dark overall. Mm -hmm. I prefer something that's got a bit more white in it. So that's why I love the fragment ones because it's just like the color block in that is just like the perfect. And I'm sure that that came up in our last conversation too, but like, I don't know what to do with these. Cause I know at least like ballpark what the value could be. Obviously it's based on what somebody's willing to pay. But part of me has been like, do I do some sort of crazy raffle? Like, what do I do with these? Because at some point, they're just going to be, you know. I mean, if they're a size 13, I will I'll gladly wear they're, them. They're, they're, <laughs> they're 12. You'd have to scrunch a little bit. They're 12. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, my, I don't know how many pairs of these there are in the world, but it ain't, it, it ain't, it ain't a lot. I think it's I, one of those where you look it up on uh, StockX. Yeah. And there's like zero pairs for say for for or like one person's got one pair for that's you know up for bid and it's like at a hundred thousand or something ridiculous. But, oh yeah, uh, I never I never agree or believe like the tip for StockX is last sold. So that's the price yes. you go off of. Yeah, but I mean, I don't I don't I don't know how people do it because like now sneaker conventions are all just that people just walking around selling sneakers and it's just tables like it's it's not as community immersive as it should be but like um like all they do is just looking at the stock x price and try to get you to, to pay the price that the highest bid is is the highest not bid the highest salt sale is mm -hmm. and and people are just constantly like the soon as you say okay like they're like okay we got, we got, we got one. We got one on the hook now. We got a fish on the hook, right? Because then they're gonna just start telling you, telling other people, be like, "Yo, he's paying the full, full price." Like, you know, and then, <laughs> it's it's just wild. Uh, do you get slack, uh, or do you get flack for uh, beating down those uh, off white Air, Air Force Ones? No, no. In fact, I've got them on right now, and they're beat the fuck up. I think they but... look great like that because you, you dude, you, they you, do. They patina yeah. so well. And like, it's so funny too. It's so interesting. And this is like where this is, this comment is why I love one of the reasons why I love sneakers, but probably the epitome of why I love it because the, the conversations can get so nuanced that it's like, if you're from the outside, it could be rocket science. It could be like Michelin star shit where it's like, that's just such a, but you can get to that layer when it comes to sneakers. There's something about the crease on these, on this pair in particular, that is different from every other crease you would get on any other pair. Obviously, different from any other crease you'd get on, on Air Force Ones, just because these are not leather and like real Air Force Ones, just, you know, they go crusty oh, in yeah. 30, 30 everybody's seconds. Like, yeah, everybody's like two wears and it's out of here. You yeah. Go. Yeah. But these, because it's not leather, they like, the the crease it doesn't happen nearly as like because i've worn these a ton but it gets this like black grayish line that it's almost as though he planted something in it and i wouldn't be surprised if he did this on purpose but this is just in my head mm -hmm. planted something in it where it would crease so that once it started to crease it would create like a permanent almost like a like a like a charcoal like drawings yeah i'm talking about like like yeah. old school charcoal draw. it's almost like that was in it so that once it started to crease it created this like permanent fossil of sorts of like this is where the crease is because i'm like i can't clean these but at the same time there's nothing at the surface layer that is actually what i'm seeing it's like in between two layers but it's this gray like charcoal kind of drawing but i think it makes them that much doper too because it's a total different type of wear and tear that these get from anything else that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I ended up having to get a backup pair because I'm like, I'm beating these up so bad. Like I'm going to get to the point where you the, the heel on the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where I'm like, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. So it's like right before it gets there, I think I'm gonna have to bust out the other pair. Um, they're the most comfortable commuter shoe that I've got. Mm -hmm. And 
these and the volts are probably where the most from a commuter shoe perspective. And I remember actually I saw somebody else, I think it was in the city somewhere that had these on that were like five times more trashed. And I remember thinking how dope they looked that beat up. And I was surprised. I'm like, wow, it's got like this amazing patina to it. It's, you know, it's obviously been through hell and back, but at the same time too, like it's still, just has like that kind of magnetic whatever that you know especially when Virgil had touched something that it still has mm -hmm. so I'm like you know it's almost like a no-brainer they stay by the front door and like 50 percent of the time these are what get in these are what are getting thrown on <laughs> man I mean I love it I love seeing that shoe in the TikToks so I'm, I'm pretty sure like I, I just hear people just being like like the angry sneakerheads, like the, the people would be like, man, he trashed those. You got to save those. Like, I'm just like, man, wear your sneakers, you know? Like <laughs> You got to. They're just going to, they're just going to go back. I've got, I, I've, I have a couple of the pairs that I have to do something else with. I've got Art Basel. I don't know if you remember, it was like 2017, I want to say. Yeah, that was the 16. You spoke about that shoe at the, on your episode that you were on. I was just like. Oh, the, um, the, the Jordan, Jordan 1s? Yeah. Yeah. And I had to look so, them up because I totally forgot about those. And I was just like, yep. oh, my God, these are like a $5,000 shoe or something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so I've got, the, I've got the Rust Pink uh -huh. and the Igloo. Mm -hmm. And those are another pair where I'm like, part of me is like, all right, those all like, because both of those colorways are immaculate. Mm -hmm. So part of me wants to bust those out and just like give them a good coating spray, which I do religiously before I wear them to just give them some sort of water or some sort of protection on the top. Even if it's just like from a mental perspective, I feel like, okay, it's not going to, they can't get that much more fucked up, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it rains. But I feel like those are, those are a pair that I got to bust out. But part of me too, I'm like, clock is ticking on some of these. And like, all of a sudden you blink and like five years go by and like, damn, because I don't keep anything on ice. And I've got maybe six pairs on ice total. But now I'm like, well, the six pairs I've had on ice, like I got to like, it's going to be 10 years pretty soon. And I don't want to get to that point where you open up the box and then it's just like all, you know, crumbly shit in there. Yeah. Like, what, you know, that's, what am I going to do? That's what happened with me for my birthday. Cause like, I like, I like for like momentous occasions. I like, like the, the, the heat or, you know, the, the high, highly praised stuff. I definitely try to like pinpoint putting them on, like undiesing them around like a moment or, or like a thing. So like yeah. for my birthday, I undied, I undies the Levi, the white Levi fours. And I was just like, man, these feel amazing. Like that, I like, I don't know if it's like, I don't know how can I explain it. It's like it, for people who are listening, the, the, that's never undies a shoe that has been sitting in the, in your closet for a while. Like it's, it's it, cause you look at that shoe, you look at that shoe and you, you'll pull it open it up and you'd be like, it's today today. And then you go, nah, next time. And then, yeah. And then you keep doing that, and then it's like I bought that shoe in 2014, so I have ten almost 10 years for wow. me to put that to put open to, to wear it. And so I was just like, all right, today's the day. I'm turning I'm turning 35. Like it's this is it. Like we're, we're gonna wear some white shoes, and it, that moment of just like putting those on and and combining it with like my birthday, like I was just like, yeah, this is it. So I say for for the art basils, man, just pinpoint the day where you're like, you know what, it's you know, my daughter's graduation or like, you know, like, and then, yeah, and then yeah. associated with, it has a story with it, yep. now, you know, so that's I've got cool. one, I got one pair that I'd be curious to your take on from a undiesing perspective, because I'm, these are the ones that I'm, I'm really stuck on because I'm not quite sure once they're out on the street, like what, how they're going to perform, so to speak, relative to like wear and tear yeah. because they're so unique. And by the way, before I tell you what pair it is to get your feedback, it's something that has to be said on a sneaker podcast. It is the funniest shit in the world that there's this entire culture and that we obsess over these shoes that were never meant to be worn outside. Mm -hmm. They're basketball shoes. They're they are not designed. Shoes. They are not designed to be. And yet there are God knows how many millions and millions and millions of pairs of these things. And people obsess over them. It's like the, it, to me, that just always cracks me up when we talk about them. Like, and they were never meant to be worn outside, <laughs> which is like of all the shit for all of us to like obsess over. It's largely shoes that just were not. 
that this is not their intended purpose, but here yeah. we are. Everything's anyway, everything's always about like court feel and stuff like that. You're not yeah, gonna right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. How, how's this going to do running up the subway stairs? Yeah. Um, so, so the pair is the Jordan One All Stars from mm -hmm. Trophy Room, mm -hmm. right? So with that, like, with the blue laces, with the blue laces. Mm -hmm. And they're go like they're gorgeous. Like yeah. I, the, in person, I think that they are just spectacular. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, what is going to happen when they start to like? I probably should Google this now that I'm saying it out loud. Like, who was unboxing them and actually wore them around and didn't just do one of those like I'm going to tiptoe into the camera just so that they can be seen on foot? Like, <laughs> what do these look like after six months or so? But like, I don't know. Does that when you think about that shoe in particular? Do you see that being a, yeah, that's going to be dope in a bit or like, ooh, that might be dicey. I mean, it depends if you're like, 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 I don't know. The way I undia shoes is more of like, I know what's going on that day. I know I'm not going to be needing to walk like 12, 12 miles, you know, like I'm not yeah. running a marathon in these. Like it, it, it's, it's like, okay. So say if you're like, so say if you go out, like, you know, you and the wife go out for a date and you know, you're going to be sitting down, you know, and, yep. and, you know, but I know you guys like hit up the train and I know that stop that you're at has the, the stairway to heaven. So, yep. <laughs> so, so that uh, I would probably factor in if how much walking you'll do be doing in that shoe, because I mean, let's be real, like Jordan ones aren't really the most comfiest shoe. So you will like overcompensate when you when you walk. So you're yep. gonna get the Jordan one toe box will least instantly crease on that. Too. Yep. So I think I mean, I'm uh, I'm off of the I'm 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 more of the realm of like, where are your kicks? So I think that eventually, I've, t I've said this to ten many people and they look at me crazy. Eventually, all your sneakers become beaters, right? Yeah. Ev eventually, they all just, you fold, you wear, you wear, you go through your collection, no matter if you wear 365 sneakers, different sneakers a day, and you do that for 10 years, that shoe eventually will become a beater. And you'll, yep. you'll wear them in the rain one day, and you'll be like, all right, whatever, now I can wear these in the rain. So, uh, you know, like, just put on a, on a, a sick outfit, Go like wear, make a momentous occasion, and put those bad boys on, man. Like, I think it's a great shoe. I like, I love the sparkle on it. Love the Michael Jordan. Like, it's it's specifically like built so that you can put it in a case and sit. Right, right. right. But what's more fun than wearing the trophies that you you got outside? That's a, the first thing I saw when I when I started to really digest what they were, and then I was like, oh my god, those who look so sick like in something obviously you have to have like the color palette right to pull them off and then the blue laces kind of throws it a little bit but um just as far as like you put that next to a traditional chicago and obviously the all-stars are going to stand out just because of that that ice on top of it that makes them so distinct but at the same time too i'm like yeah but am i going to be because i you know it's never the first night that crosses my mind it's like where is it in six months mm -hmm. And is it better to, is that a pair that I should bust out, spray, and then just start beating up? Or is that a pair that it's like, okay, this just goes back into the marketplace or again, do I do some sort of fun raffle? But I feel like I'm getting close to like four or five pairs that I have that have been on ice where it's like decision time. Mm -hmm. Like, don't just let these sit in a box somewhere. Like you do not do that. I don't even keep my boxes. So, like, what's what's gonna happen next? I mean, I I have I'm in the same realm, right? Like, there's like like true true on DS that I haven't on, on DS. One of them is the Dornbecker Eights. I like they're just sitting there because they're just so crazy. But I'm also like like I'm not a big fan of the Eights, so I'm like, why did I buy these? And then it's also just like, but these are so sick. And then I'm just it, it, like I always go back and forth. I haven't found a moment where I'm like, yes, because like when I bought the Amon Manier Threes. I was like, as soon as I have a, a momentous occasion, I'm putting those things on. And then from then mm -hmm. on, I've been wearing them, not a lot, but like they're in the rotation, like the the monthly rotation. But it it's definitely like if you think, it, it, if you forget about a shoe, then I definitely think it's time to let it go. But yeah. if it's a shoe that you continuously be like, um, it's in the back of my mind, 
I think it's, it has time. I think it, there is a time. You just got to, you're going to, it's going to hit you and be like, aha, where we go. I got invited to the Emmys, trophy room once. Like, you know, like something like crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully that's a little manifesting. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, 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 we were towards the end. I had one more question, but I think you have to leave. Like you got give, me, give me one more. All right. One more question. And, and because we're big Supreme fans, uh, like, the question that's been asked around to people who people say like, you know, Supreme's corny now and this and that, but the, I'm very curious. Do you think Supreme is dead? No, thought, it will never die. It will never die. Mm-hmm. Is it going to have moments where it peaks and where it valleys? A thousand percent. Every brand does. What, what brand has been at that type of level since 1994? Right. For the people that are like Supreme is dead. Okay, cool. What were your thoughts on it in 2002? Right. Who's going to have an answer to that question? 99% of the people that are saying Supreme is dead are going to. And yes, without question, Supreme got to a place of saturation. The takeover was, or not the takeover, but the buy gave it that much more reason for it to be pointed to. There's, you know, does every brand have hits across the board every single season, every single drop? No. The relevancy is, I think, a thousand percent still there. What I love the most about where it is right now is that when you see articles that are posted, at least based on what I've what I've seen, which is not everything, so I, I'm not encapsulating like the entire world synopsis on this, but you'll see a post from like high snobiety or like somebody else is like, okay, here's the take. And then I'll feel like I'll see so many comments that are like, cool, y'all turn your backs on this more for the rest of us. Like I've been with this since blank year, good, good riddance. And it's, and so I, that makes me, you know, it's just one of the many reasons to say Supreme is definitely not dead um, is because I think that those that just have always loved the brand, and this is kind of cliche to say, but those who have always lo- loved the brand still do. Mm-hmm. And they're always going to have a place in they're always going to have a place in that conversation around streetwear and streetwear culture. And on top of that, like it's all cyclical, right? Yeah. I mean, Ab- the fact that Abercrombie and Fitch is like something people are talking about again blows my mind. Yeah, like especially I, after I was, that doc, that doc was crazy. Well, like the 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 um, when their lookbooks first started coming out in and first started coming out relative to like when they first popped on the scene, which was like 1997, 98. Mm -hmm. I remember because I lived in the States and I was going to school in Canada, I would bring like the, the big ass thick lookbooks back Mm -hmm. and people would lose their mind for that shit. They're like, this is the dopest thing. And just like it, it fit and it had like, it made all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. And I remember I even got a job at one of them just for like a summer or like a winter break, just so I could get a discount by a bunch of shit. And then were it just felt. Were you out shirtless? Were you out Oh hell no! Oh hell no! No, I was not. That was that was not. That was definitely not me. I was the I was the frumpy dude in the back that's like, yo, I'm cool folding all day. Like I don't want to talk to anybody. And and uh, and and then it and then it and then it died. I feel like it died in a hot second too. And now all of a sudden there's these things that are back, and it's wild as a 45 year old, right? Because like my contemporaries are from an age perspective, right? Like Tom Brady's my age, you know, Jay-Z is what, five years older than I am. There's, you know, there's like this really interesting mix of people from a pop culture perspective that people know, but they don't like associate with a specific age bracket. And it just means that we have seen a lot of different cycles. So this is just that cycle for Supreme right now, which I think is fine and especially from like a collaboration perspective, like, do I love every collaboration that they've done? Absolutely not. Do I think that there's probably, you know, a few more North face collaborations than we need? Probably. Yeah. But if it means more people get access to and and can love it, amazing. And from an accessory perspective, like to me, that's still the gold standard of collaborations, especially on the accessory side. I bought the vase this year. Mm -hmm. They they dropped like a a vase and I didn't know how big it was until it showed up at the house yeah, and it's 
gigantic. That thing has got to be like yay big. And my wife was like, where are we putting that? And I'm like, I don't know, but look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. And she's yeah. like, yes, it's super dope, but like it is giant. What are we, we don't like, who the hell is going to bring home flowers that are on three foot stems? Like, <laughs> But um, I know what to bring anyway. you. I know what to bring you when I finally get an invite to the house. I'm gonna be like, here you go, like three foot stem sunflowers. Here you go. <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal, <laughs> man. Thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. On the podcast, I don't know why I said it that way, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what we say for everybody that's listening: wear your kicks. Peace. Peace.